So by this point, you should have a pretty good understanding of what the Tickets WooCommerce plugin does. We've already set it up. We've already set up our first ticketed event as a site administrator. And now we're going to switch gears a little bit for Screencast 3. And we are actually going to complete a purchase of a ticket in the same way that an end user would. Put your shoes in the position of somebody who is coming to visit your site. They see an event that's cool and they want to buy a ticket for it. That's what we're doing here. And you'll notice I'm in a different browser than we used for the last screencast because I'm totally logged out. Again, I'm viewing the site as a front end user would. And I found the monthly tribal council meeting that we were editing in screencast number two. I want to buy a ticket to it. So I'm going to scroll down beneath the featured image, beneath the description, beneath the details, beneath the venue. And I will actually go down to this tickets panel. Here we're seeing the one type of ticket that's available, which again, we set up in screencast two. It's adults. It costs $15. And here's the description. Adults are always welcome. What I'm going to do is add the one ticket that I want into my cart. It's just me. I'm not bringing any friends, so I don't need to buy tickets for anybody else. I have one ticket coming. I'm going to hit add to cart. When we get to the cart now, we're inside WooCommerce. If you've used WooCommerce before, you're going to know that this is exactly the same interface you see when using WooCommerce. And it's because our event tickets are really just WooCommerce products that we've added into the system. When it comes to actually completing the purchase, WooCommerce treats it just as it would any other product. And so you're taking to the shopping cart. It's going to look pretty similar to any shopping cart you've seen. Over here, we have the ability to cancel our ticket. We can modify the quantity if we wanted to bump it up a little bit. If I did, I would hit update cart here. I can apply a coupon if I have a coupon that I'd like to take a discount off for me, but I don't have one, so I'm going to skip that. And then I can just review the confirmation of what I'm actually going to be paying. Once I'm satisfied, I'll hit proceed to checkout, and I will complete the checkout process. The checkout process is going to ask me for some information. If I'm a returning customer who has completed a purchase here on the site using WooCommerce before, whether it's a ticket or another product, I could log back in with the credentials I set up during that checkout process. I don't have that right now, so I'm going to ignore it. If I had a coupon, here it's telling me again, hey, if you got a coupon, we can save you some money. But again, I don't have one, so I'm not going to worry about it. All I really want to fill in is my billing address, so I'm going to drop all that in. So the red asterisks obviously are required. Almost all of these are required. And even the one that isn't company name I filled in. Then I get down below and there's also this create an account option. And what this is going to do is it's going to create an account for this user on your site. They won't have access to the back end, but it'll be a way of saving them as a customer so that if they come back to purchase additional tickets down the road, they can log back in again up here using those credentials and not have to re-enter all the billing information. This is only going to be an option if you have registration enabled on your overall WordPress site, which is a general WordPress setting. So if you don't allow for front end user registration, creating an account won't be an option and users will just always have to register as a guest. I'm going to register as a guest here, I'm not going to create an account, just go through as a regular old guest. And you'll see how that looks on the back end of the site when we actually complete processing the order as a site administrator. Just know that whether or not you have this enabled is going to impact how users engage when they come to purchase a second time down the road. They'll either log in with the existing credentials or they'll just redo this process, which as you saw is not very long. Down below, then I can just review the order one more time, make sure I'm satisfied with it, and then I can select the payment method. Right now we're going with just the default WooCommerce payment options. I haven't modified these in the slightest. And so we have direct bank transfer. We have check payment, which is including the default stock text, as you can see here. And then we have PayPal, which is an option, but I haven't actually configured yet. I'm going to go with check payment. I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to complete this order. And then I'm going to send you guys at Modern Tribe a check. And when you get that check, you'll mark my order complete and you'll let me have the ticket. That said, I will just hit place order here. Let it work its magic for a few seconds as it processes the order. And when it finishes, I get on this order received page. They're telling me the order has been received. Here's the order number in their system. Here's when it came through and here's how much I paid. And down below, I can see just a, pretty much an overview that sums up everything that we've been looking at over the past few screens. Right now, I'm done on my end as a buyer. I have nothing else I can do. I know the Modern Tribe has my order, and then I need to send them a check. Let's go check my email, though. Notice what happened. I, re I received this in the email address, the inbox of the email address that I configured during the setup process, the checkout. We will see that we have this thank you for your order message. The order has been received. It is now being processed. And here are the details. Again, pretty similar to what we just looked at on that last screen. This is telling me we've got it. It's not finished, but it's in our system. Let's take off our buyer hat now and jump back into the back end of the site as the site administrator would. I'm going to say it's been a couple weeks. I have now received the check from that buyer and I want to go ahead and mark his order complete so that he gets the email confirming that his purchase is done and with his ticket. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to come in from the dashboard. I'm going to go into WooCommerce and you see there's this little one for orders here, which means it's a new order. When I click into orders, 
I will see that latest order, which is 2528. It's sitting right here. Notice a couple things. One, it's made by guest. He didn't set up a new account because as we saw, we didn't elect that option when we were checking out. We just said, I want to pass through with this purchase, but it does keep track who this person is. So even though it's just a guest, I still have his email address, his information that was put in the billing field. So if I do need to follow up with him, I can. He just did a register an account. Notice also the status here is on hold because of course this isn't like an automatic PayPal purchase where it just goes through and you don't have to process it. I actually have to take some action here or else I'd be giving this guy a ticket and just taking him on his word, which I don't really want to do. I want to wait till I've actually received the check in my hand and then I come in here and I will change this from on hold to complete. How do I do that? Easiest way is to check the box right next to it, come up into bulk actions, change to mark completed and hit apply. It'll work for a second, and when it finishes, that little yellow on hold message will be replaced by a blue checkbox. Completed. We know that this order has been processed. The user now will be receiving an email that says, Yay, your order's done, here's your ticket, etc. Let's go see if he did. Indeed, he did. Notice we not only have the order receipt, which is what came through, we then get this follow up that says, Your Modern Tribe order from June 24th is complete. It's pretty similar to the last email we saw, but you'll see it's actually telling me this time, not only have we received it, we're done. You are set, and you'll see receive the tickets in another email. The other email, as you saw a second ago, has arrived. Let's pop it open and take a look at how it operates. It's looking pretty solid. My header image is in place, the one that we set up, and apparently it's worth noting that this is going to carry over to all header images, as I noted in a previous screencast. Not going to have a ticket-by-ticket -ticket basis here. We get down below, we have the event title, have when the event is taking place, the ticket number, the type, who purchased it, the security code, which can be used by the person at the door or whatever to cross-reference this in case they're worried about duplicates or sketchy people making copies that they shouldn't, etc. We then have the venue with the option to go view the map for it if we want to. A link to where the site, the purchase that we, uh, the site where we made the purchase, and then the organizer information if there is any. Right now it's just the name. Note how in this case I accidentally set the organizer to be the same thing as the featured image, so it all worked out in the long run. Basically, this is a finished ticket, and you're going to know that we don't do the PDF tickets anymore. As of the WooCommerce Tickets 2.0 release, we don't do PDF tickets anymore because we received feedback from the community that they didn't really like them, they found them hard to customize, etc. This new method is much more straightforward and should give you a greater degree of customization as you see fit. If there are multiple tickets, you'll receive multiple tickets via email. We just ordered one, so that's all we're getting at the moment. That's the process of completing an order, and that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this screencast. For screencast four, which is going to be probably the last one in this series, we're going to look at the showtime aspects that you as a site administrator have, how you can run reports, how you can check people in when the event is taking place, etc.